Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and today we're going to take a quick look at some ways to use the compressor in Apple's Logic Studio software. First, we're going to take a look at parallel compression, and then we're going to take a look at a couple of uses for the compressor's sidechain input. Let's start by breaking a cardinal rule of audio processing. We're going to put the compressor on a send instead of using it as an insert effect. In many cases, this is a big no-no, since usually all we want to hear is the compressed signal and none of the original signal. But this technique, called parallel compression, has become quite popular and is used a lot. Let's say, for example, we want to make our kick drum pop out in the mix a bit and give us a little more impact. Putting a heavy compressor on the insert may yield the attack we want to help it cut through the mix, but at the expense of the fullness of the sound. A solution is to set up an aux send, insert the compressor on the aux, and send the kick to it. This gives us a blend of the two sounds, our original kick drum, which in this instance has a little EQ to beef up the bottom end, and a heavily compressed version on the aux. On the compressor itself, I have the ratio set to a serious 9 to 1, and I've got the attack at around 9 milliseconds. We're trying to get a serious smack out of this thing, so we want a high ratio like this, and adding a little attack allows the transient signal to go through before the compressor kicks in, giving us the impact we want. On a kick drum like this, I'll usually add an EQ after the compressor so we can pull out some bottom end on the compressed signal to keep us from getting too much low end. Remember, we're getting the low end we need on our kick drum from the uncompressed signal before the aux. Once you get the compressor set to give you the impact you want, you can adjust the blend by simply raising or lowering the level on your aux channel. You can try it out on other drum sounds as well, snares for example. In this instance, I have a pattern playing from Ultrabeat, sending it to our compressor on aux 3 makes it pop out a little bit in the mix. Just be aware that sending things to the compressor starts adding a lot of volume to your stereo bus, so keep an eye out on your output levels so they don't get too hot. Our next technique involves using the compressor's sidechain input. Using the sidechain allows you to use one audio track to control the way a compressor behaves on another audio signal. That sounds a little complicated, but it's really a simple and quite common technique. Let's go back to our little track and take a look at an example. In this first example, I'm going to show you how to add a little rhythmic feel to a static pad sound using the compressor's sidechain. Here, I've got a phasing pad sound I generated on Logic's ES2 plugin. Let's use the kick to make our compressor pump a little bit and give our pad some groove. I just insert the Logic compressor across the track that has the synth sound. Then we open it up, and when we go up here to the top right where it says sidechain input, and select the track that has our kick drum, which in this case is Audio 1. The compressor is still compressing the synth, but the action is being controlled by the kick drum. As I start to bring the threshold down, you can hear it working. I have our ratio set to 9 to 1 to make it really pump, and I can play with the attack and release to get the timing just where I want it. This pad kick drum combo is just one example you can use this in any number of ways. One common use is to have the kick compress the bass line to help your rhythm section fall into the pocket. Or you can have it set up to have a voiceover duck the music down, say for a commercial or podcast. Today's top story, Logic Studio Compressor Tips. The possibilities are vast. Let's check out one more related technique. I love to use delays to add atmosphere and rhythmic interest to mixes, and Logic's tape delay is a terrific sounding unit that's really easy to use. The problem sometimes, especially with longer feedback settings, is that the delay can begin to overwhelm your source sound. But we can use the sidechain input on the compressor to duck the echo when our original sound plays and make the echo pop out in the spaces between the melody lines. Like what we did with the pad before, the echo will pump a little bit. Let's look at an example using Korg's Legacy Cell plugin as our sound source. I have a little melody playing the healing guitar patch. My first send goes to bus 1, which is the input to aux channel 1. On aux 1, I've got the tape delay plugin with a very high feedback amount of 53%. A little higher and the delay will self oscillate, so be careful. I also have the sound sending to bus 2 at 0 dB level. So the amount of send is equal to the output of the fader. Bus 2 is the input to aux channel 2, and I took the output of aux 2 out of the stereo bus. Since I don't want to hear it, I just want to route it to the compressor's side chain. Going back to aux 1 here, 
after the delay, I've got the compressor on, and I've set the side chain to look at bus 2. I've got quite a high ratio here, and I'm really squashing the echo when the melody plays. Let's take a listen. You can really hear the echo pop out in the spaces between the melody lines. This technique is also very effective on busy solo parts, where you don't want the delay cluttering up complex patterns. It can also be very effective on vocals as well. So let's hear it for the versatility of Logic's compressor. You can get quite a bit of mileage out of this unsung hero. For more information about the Logic Studio Music Production Suite from Apple, or any of the other digital audio workstations we carry here at B&H, Visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. Thanks for watching.